The firestorm over President Trump's press conference is growing. More protests erupting, erupting at Trump Tower overnight. And Robin, the comments sparking so much backlash. President Trump saying both sides of the protesters at that Charlottesville rally were to blame for the conflict and also saying there were, quote, very fine people in both groups. And also this morning, the movement to take down Confederate statues and monuments across the country is growing, and more of them were, came down yesterday in Baltimore. Both Republicans and Democrats this morning calling out the president, saying this is not about sharing blame, that parsing the blame is actually a victory for the white supremacists. The president also now losing the backing of business leaders. Six executives have now resigned from Trump's manufacturing council over his comments about Charlottesville. Our coverage begins with ABC's Mary Bruce, who was there at that press conference at Trump Tower. She's back there this morning for us. Mary, good morning. Good morning, David. The president wasn't even supposed to take questions, but he surprised even his own staff by launching into an adamant defense of his response to the violence in Charlottesville. Gone was the more measured tone the president took earlier this week. Instead, he was back to his defiant self. It was billed as a statement on infrastructure, but turned into one of the most contentious press conferences of Trump's presidency. The president doubling down, furiously defending his decision to wait 48 hours after the violence in Charlottesville to call out the white supremacists by name. Why did you wait so long? I didn't, I didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure, unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct not make a quick statement. The statement I made on Saturday, the first statement, was a fine statement. But you don't make statements that direct unless you know the fact. It takes a little while to get the facts. Three days after those hate-fueled protests, the president was back to blaming both sides. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Defending those gathered to speak out against the removal of a statue of Robert E. Lee. I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue of Robert E. Lee. This week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And he used a new name to label the counter-protesters. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is so what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that. I asked the president to clarify, is he putting the counter-protesters in the same category as the white supremacists? Mr. President, are you putting what you're calling the alt-left and white supremacists on the same moral plane? I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other, and they came at each other with clubs, and it was vicious, and it was horrible, and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. And this morning, the backlash is growing. Six members of the president's manufacturing council have now announced they're leaving, including four of the nation's top CEOs. For them, the cost of doing business with the Trump administration now seeming to outweigh the benefits. But the president is defending these dismissals, dismissing these departures, saying he has many others to take their place. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.